How long does it take to rank up in Rocket League? Well, for the past 30 days, I queued over 100 games of almost exclusively ranked 2v2. Today, I'm gonna be walking you through exactly what happened, what I learned, and what you need to know at the end, all highlighted down into one video to help you learn faster than anywhere else. Also, I could not have done this by myself. I want to give a huge thanks to my editors, Delaney and Winston, for helping make this video possible. If you find this video helpful and want to support getting this content out to more people, I'd really appreciate it if you liked and subscribed to the channel. Three-fourths of my viewers aren't subbed, so if you even just liked or subbed, it would have a massive impact on the YouTube algorithm. Plus, it's completely free, and you can always unsub whenever you want. But all right, let's check out what 30 days of grinding ranked 2v2 did to my gameplay after this quick message from the video sponsor. A lot of people don't know this, but I can only afford to pay my editors through the work I do in my private coaching program. And as of seven days ago, we are temporarily reopening enrollment for season six of my flagship program, the Grand Champ Roadmap. Led by my top 100 SSL 1v1 friend, King Ranny, this program is the one-stop shop to get better and rank up faster in Rocket League. Through the program, I've helped over 300 players climb a combined over 100,000 MMR. If you want that too, I am currently signing players 18 plus years old through my Discord DMs for a limited time only. If that sounds interesting, you can DM me personally with the keyword 2v2 on Discord, link in the description below. Otherwise, enjoy the video, guys. All right, jumping into game one. We're gonna be breaking down all 100 games and basically the transformation start to finish to help teach you guys as much as I possibly can in one single video about 2v2. It was an interesting transition. I started this right after the 100 games of 1v1 and it was interesting bringing what I had learned in the 1v1 series over here. If you haven't seen that video, there's more on that there, but the big thing that I noticed, number one, the first thing that starts working for me right out of the gate that helps me beat lower ranked players is not no look saving. Don't do that. Um, <laughs> is the soft touches into hard touches. What ones taught me was how effective staying near the ball is. And that's something you're going to see through game one, game two here. Um, and beyond. Another big thing is going to be, of course, shooting. Um, honestly, that was just Orange Team's mistake, feeding me the ball back. You'll see the 1v1 play translating here, being able to dribble on an angle, dribble to the right there, so that way I could see the goalie. That's basically what enabled me to score that goal. Um, cutting off my teammate there a little bit, and eh, don't worry about it in game three. But watch this. It's the soft touches into the... Oh, didn't execute that one right. But the idea was right there. The soft touch into hard touch is really, really good in 2v2 in beating multiple defenders. And you'll see, we actually use it here. I put the ball in an awkward situation. We just beat Phase Scissors. You know Phase Scissors? That was Phase Scissors in game three. More on him later. For whatever reason, we're the same rank in a lot of this video. And something tells me might be seeing more of him. But look at this. You see this? The first strategy that's really effective for me out of the gate in this video is the soft touch into hard touch. Taking the ball, knocking it down, then being able to follow it up. That's a strategy that I use to beat a lot of players. It's something I want you to keep track of. Maybe a challenge of somebody watching right now is keep track of how I actually score my goals. Maybe somebody can do a pinned comment down below. That would be awesome. Here you see me get punished for not playing behind my teammate. I learned my lesson though. And in 2v2, especially if you're solo queuing, a lot of people ask, how do I position around my teammate? You almost always want to stack on top of them. I see a lot of low players optimistically try to go like left or right of their teammate. It doesn't really work. It, it doesn't really work. You need to stack in 2v2. In threes, you can play more aggressive, but specifically talking about 2v2 principles that work for me, stacking is very effective. Um, I'm, you'll almost never see me go for a pass um, with solo queue teammates unless it's a non-committal one, but we'll talk about that later. Game six, though, we're still on day one here. I get absolutely flicked on. Um, but it's okay. Gonna pay. We pay it back with a low 50. And 
even at GC2, GC3, you'll see some of these goals are just... <laughs> what does that even look like? But you'll see we're starting out the series, all right? Grand Champ 2, Div 2. Starting out pretty high ranked, so these, these lobbies are already competitive. That second strategy that you see working very well for me here in Game 8 is when I know my teammate is behind me, just challenging early no matter what. I know my teammate's on the goal line, so I'm just going to try to make a stop, force him to pick a line, and here it actually turns into just a full-on goal. I just realized, my games yesterday, and the last like 20 games in my 100 games of 1v1, I just recorded the voiceover for the second half of the 100 games of 1v1, my mic was off. My mic wasn't, my mic wasn't bound. Day one, when I played Phase Scissors, I was calming my ass off. Now I'm gonna have to try to do it justice with voiceover. Oh, so tragic. You'll see here, me just causing chaos, wins possession for our team, and of course, Jussie ends up clipping on him. But my main strategy in 2v2, something that I realized is winning possession. Something that you'll hear me say, a lot, if you, if you know about my coaching, is threes is a game of pressure, whereas twos is a game of possession. And in this video, basically all the strategy that I realized helped me win possession. So I'm gonna keep showing you some more of them. Here, this is an example of what you should not do. What I should have done instead is go for the center. That's totally fine. Um, the execution wasn't great on the center. I can totally go for this, but I should save my jump, if at all possible, and recover quickly. That way, it's a 1v1, but I'm backing up my teammate, and Krippy has no backup on the orange team. That's something I realized too, so. But here, playing passive on offense, this was big for me. Staying distant, keeping my distance off the backboard is something that ended up being really, really, really useful. And you'll see, okay, fine. We're in GC2, where do mechanics come in? Well, the main thing that I started using for mechanics that worked the best was air dribbles. And specifically, not even trying to air dribble to beat opponents, but literally what I'll do is I just take the ball over one person and then try to get a 50-50 on the, on the next, right? Not even trying to create goals, just trying to create possession advantages, right? Just like imbalances, right? Where we have 2v1s um, or we just have some positional advantage. Ah, get away from my net. Get in your net. Let's go. Because <laughs> you'll see, even at these high levels, a lot of these goals are going to come from, I mean, you guessed it, fast aerials, basic shooting, open nets, right? Just letting my teammates do their thing. So it's a lot about enabling and not creating any weaknesses more than it is honestly like outplaying people like you'll see here just being in the right spot creates a goal once again i'm just following my teammate being in the right spot creates a goal sometimes sometimes i'll just outplay him right that's where mechanics come in but you could still you'll see like a, the vast majority of my girl goals like i highly delaney's probably highlighting all the ones where i'm mechanical shout out delaney for making me look good <laughs> but still even so like you'll see a lot of the goals are just basic principles right and so that those are that's what we're really really going to focus on i'm going to keep trying to talk as much about principles as I can. Here you'll see me waiting behind my teammate. Once again, just an open net. I score an open net, right? This is GC, like these are not bad players. So we're up a pretty decent amount of games. Definitely probably up 10 games, down six games. And this is currently the end of day two. So two days in, we already surge up to around 1660 MMR, I believe I am. Um, pretty, pretty high up there. Here I try to get mechanical, but you'll see, like getting mechanical doesn't work unless you beat both players. So that's where like, this is where I start to get punished for, for starting to play out of principle. <laughs> for starting to play off off GTO. And of course my teammate flames me for doing it. stop queuing, dog. This was my first game. 1649, all right, decent, game 18. Here, I'm going to get a center for my teammate. Just put a tough shot on that. Another simple air roll shot goal. That one was probably my fault. I mean, you can't blame me. <laughs> you can't blame me for going for that one. But then look, what happens next? Just an open net goal. Being patient on defense. The ball comes into the right spot. What happens next? An open net goal. Just being patient on defense. It actually might be useful to show what led up to some of those situations. But now. But once again, lots of open nets. And day four here, we're at day four right now of queuing, game 20. You'll see how a, how a lot of a lot of my goals start to come through. Cool, carry me. That should be a goal. Yep. A little laggy, but 
here pretty pretty standard here finally starting to bring in the 1v1 play you see why 1v1 is important essentially my mindset in 2v2 is okay how can i win a 2v1 situation for me or my teammate and then from there you try to create those advantages and that's where the 1v1 play play comes in but a good framework to be thinking about when you're playing is just how can i create a 2v1 for my team then you can go for bump plays then you can go for whatever you want to go for um that's where the 1v1 play and outplaying them comes in i mean here you'll see i'm just outspeeding those players but then then the mechanics come into play. here we're gonna hit the ball to the side i remember this i thought my teammate totally had it that's what i get <laughs> that's what you get for trusting teammates now a big piece is definitely trusting definitely trusting teammates i remember here quick quick tip if you're ever trying to catch the ball turn off ball cam pay attention to the silhouette as the ball falls you're gonna score way more goals that way but even when my teammates are scoring right in 2v2 you have to give space to your team that's what happens when you don't even when my teammates are scoring what you could definitely take away is my positioning something i learned is that it's almost always better when you're waiting for your team to be farther back then farther forward, right? You could always move farther forward, but it's really hard to backtrack. My playstyle here, like even on this clip, I was thinking to myself, why don't I just go for a low 50-50 that puts the ball right in an optimal place for us? I like the ball being on this part of the map. And then I just go for a demo. But you see the idea of like, why just beating your opponent in 2v2 isn't really what you want to do. You want to create a 2v1 situation. Kickoffs were definitely very important. Basically, by default, I'm trying to win the kickoff, but if I see my teammate rotating back, I usually check with my camera, then I'll try to like lose it to the corner for them. Um, that became more important like as we got higher in the ranks and it became really, really tough to score goals. But you'll see game 25 here. Look, just playing around my teammates, giving them space, not over committing. Here, my teammate clutches up on defense, I remember. Sometimes stuff like that's gonna happen. We end up winning game 25 basically because of that. I believe. Oh, and this. You know what? I take credit. Come on. Sometimes you got you just got a squishy save. And so we're steadily climbing here. 1668, I believe, going into game 26. Definitely saw a huge surge right off the bat from playing 1v1s. Basically, playing 1v1s is super useful for 2v2. It just helps a lot with these one-on-one -on -one situations, knowing when when you can go for what. Um, and definitely, I would say, air roll shots and dribbling. Once again, see, this, this is all 1v1 play. Like, this is why 1v1s are important. Just knowing principles can put your team in advantageous situations, but then having the mechanics is how you finish them dribbling on an angle when you dribble on an angle i can see everybody on the left side of my screen so it's like oh I'll just fake one flick over the other and i look like a boss but really i just dribbled sideways this guy says you do youtube right <laughs> yes i do like and subscribe youtube algorithm come on struggling out here game 28 we're gonna make a nice center to the teammate he's gonna finish it up and normally i don't chase these balls but when i see that guy um, clearly in a weak spot. I'm going to challenge up. Unfortunately, my teammate gets beat here. I think that was his fault. A lot of people would just hit this ball as hard as they could forward. I'm like, no, I'm going to try to hit it with like a weak part of my car, drop it down. My intention was to make a soft touch, land and follow it. And that soft touch into hard touch beats so many players. GC2 do four. Come on. 1680 something already in rank. How about that? Game 30. I go up for a Hail Mary, Hail Mary save. I remember we were just kidding. We were just getting destroyed this game. Like, and at that point, I think I got uh, kind of given up. But sometimes it happens. <laughs> sometimes it happens. Here, for example, my teammate should totally be on this ball, but he just grabs boost. And sometimes you're going to get scored on, right? Th th that's variance. Here, you'll see me being patient. I see my teammate going, so I was just trying to buy time, let him clear out the defender. Ends up working. Once again, I bumped their guy, hoping my teammate would be back. And sometimes, like, your teammate's just not going to be back. And he ends up saying, okay, I'm sorry. Because <laughs> I think his recoveries are bad. But that's why recoveries are important. They were running games with Coconut. One of my buddies, he's the same rank as me. Because I wanted to see if comms would help. And clearly in game 32, they did not. But maybe game 33. <laughs> in game 33, we're going to jump in. Uh, I leave Coconut back. Um... But I make a nice pass to him. This was a very committal pass, so it probably wasn't great. Um, but we're going to talk more about non-committal nice pass. passes. We definitely, it took us a while to, to get the chemistry down. Dude, did I just dunk you? But at the lower <laughs> ranks, you should yeah, absolutely team queue. Like at the higher ranks, it's not as important because generally, like, even players that you solo queue with, to be honest, they have a better sense of, like, when to go for the ball and when not to, just by definition, right? They're higher ranks. But the low ranks, even if you guys aren't the best together, 
just queuing together, it's going to boost like your combined MMR by like 100. But here you'll see these drive challenges. I end up getting a great 50 and I can follow the ball up. But even so, my strategy there is just to make some conflict delay without committing. This is why recoveries are so important. It allows you to put the ball closer to your opponent for those soft touch follow ups. Um, and then sometimes just whiffing the ball works. <laughs> the fakies? The fakies. <laughs> Game 35. I remember this. We're going to start an air dribble a little wacky. Um, somehow that worked. Don't don't do that. But I would say yes. like this is one thing about air dribbles oh, that I really do game, like man. and why I use them so much in 2v2. Air dribbles are the least risky mechanic to go for because they're a very safe option. You can always just like bail out of an air dribble by going for like a 50-50 or just staying behind the ball. And you'll see me use them a lot for that reason. Um, that's why air dribbles are so good. If you're going to train a high level mechanic, train air dribbles. It'll help you rank up in twos. I promise. Nice, man. Whew. I should jump. I'll just wait. Ooh. Let's go. Hey, <laughs> let's go. Hey. It's still going to get Nope. Yep. There we go. Yes. I um, and of course, all the dribbling stuff that you would learn in once sure. translates very well as well. I remember game 38. Coconut was having a rough one. Oh. <laughs> so we're, we'll move on to game 39. <laughs> oh, yep. That's... That's all right. But once again, these right simple there. air roll shots. I actually have an air roll shot tutorial, but air nice roll shot shots dude. are super, super useful in twos. Just being able to put the ball in net with power is honestly more important than anything else. Good Even if shit. your accuracy isn't great, just being able to shoot with power at the center of the net, and then if you even miss a little bit, uh, is totally fine. A lot of people ask me because I'm higher ranked, like, oh, how are you so good at shooting? And like, yes, I aim my shots, but even like, I'm gonna let you in on a secret, like even people at the highest ranks can't aim them perfectly. So what I try to do is I, I can aim it generally, and then I'm just trying to hit it as hard as I can. And usually I'll be honest, my power is comp gonna compensate a little bit for my accuracy. And sometimes I'll mess up so badly that they just freeze on the backboard. <laughs> I don't even know what to do. Here, a little pre-flipper works. Watch the speed flip tutorial. That'll be useful for you no matter what game mode you're in. Well, we're moving up to game 40. And you'll see I'm kind of stagnating in rank here. A lot of these goals are very unconventional. You know, you'll see, like, my teammates are scoring sometimes. Sometimes I'm scoring off weird scenarios. Um, and so I try to go get back to the principles, okay? Because I believe that you can get very, very high in the ranks. I'm convinced now you can get to probably GC2, GC3 just off principles. And you'll see me here. I want to highlight Blade challenging me is really, really, really bad for the orange team. They end up getting rewarded in this situation. But if I would have taken that 50 just a little more to the right, it would have been really bad for orange. I got a little bit frustrated because I was getting scored on a lot in these couple games off players that weren't playing on principle, but that like gameplay style where I'm going for the low 50 in my corner, that's absolutely the right thing to do. Sometimes your teammates will just pop off. I remember thinking, what is going on <laughs> this game? Nexus was just peeking. <laughs> what that's is cool. going on? Well, that'll work. Um, but then we get back to our roots a little bit with game 43, try to start climbing again. Here, you'll see once that 2v1 situation happens, if your teammate has the ball, you almost always want to go for a clearance demo. Or you can just wait behind your teammate and follow up after, you know, assuming they get a good 50-50, try to clean up, depending on basically how flat-footed the opponent is and how far up the field your teammate has moved. You can make the judgment call whether or not you can get in front of them. This is how you should play these. Like, if you're taking the ball off your backward here, I just need to get a good 50-50 here. Green, unfortunately, messes up my 50-50 with look. So, like, teammates are going to concede goals for you like that. But this is why it's so important to trust your team, um, especially at the higher ranks. You'll see we're 16.85. So, slowly, slowly, slowly moving up. Definitely progress plateaued in the middle. This, once again, it's a good 50-50 to take, but I just took it wrong. Like, I just didn't play it right. And this is why learning how to take 50-50s is so important at the higher levels and why 1v1 is so important. Like, learning how to take 50-50s alone is a mechanic that, like, nobody thinks about. But pay attention to, like, how high, high, high rate players do it because it's actually so important. It's the only mechanic you can go for when you have zero boost, usually, right? Is a low 50-50. So that's why it's so important to learn. Unfortunately, I remember in this game, sometimes you're just going to get teammates who struggle to hit open nets. Luckily... We get Jonah in game 47, I remember. Jonah played really well. He did. He understood the strategy of like capitalizing on the 2v1 very well. As you do get to the higher levels, one thing I will say, always center the ball high. Even if it's hard for your teammate to hit, it's even harder for the opponent. 
jump in a game 48. Look at the leaderboard. Oh no, I remember this. <laughs> Jonah and I are just solo queuing, and look who we ran into. Huh, just just Mesko and Henkovich. Guess how this one ended. Actually, you may be surprised. The problem is when you're playing against Mesko and Hen Henkovich, like I'm always expecting them to clip, so I we both pre-jumped Hank. Couldn't stop him. I pre-jumped Mesko. Then he musty double tapped on us. And uh <laughs> it was definitely hard. The one thing I will say is like from a you know competitive standpoint. Like, I was actually, we were actually able to hang with these guys. Look at this. I don't know what got into me. I tried to go for a flip reset musty on, on Henkovich and Mesko. But look what ends up working, though. Scuffed air dribble. But you see why air dribbles are good, right? Because even when I mess it up, I still clip on Mesko and Henkovich. Here, we just get absolutely dumpstered by this guy. This ball falls down, but Lucid is pre-jumping behind me. Should just be waiting on the goal line. And that's why we get scored on there. But when your teammate is behind you, you want to signal that to them as early as possible that you are going for the ball. And here at game 50, you'll see me get back to my roots. Not only am I beating the guy, but what's really important here is that I use air roll to make a soft touch and that allows me to follow it up. That's why air roll can be super useful. It allows you to make those precise touches on the ball that do become very important at the higher levels. But we decided to cue someone with Striped and it was really good to have a teammate. After games 49, I decided, okay, I need a teammate, you know, who's more at my level. Striped is actually a little bit below, but the, f I guess the case experiment here is watch what happens in these games, games 50 through 55, even though Striped is a lower rank than me, right? He's like actually significant. He's like 100, 150 in Marble Low. He's like GC1. He, he's been up to GC2, um, but definitely not as high as I, I got this season. Just having comms, so important. And they're just putting the ball in awkward situations. That'll work wonders for you. So we're closing out after, you know, after games 40. So I, I dropped quite a few after like 40 through 50 off of not executing properly and running into bad teammates. Um, I think that's kind of how you can analyze those. That's kind of how you can summarize those games. Um, but he asked me for a sign. <laughs> not stripe. Can I get a sign? Whoa. That's right. Whoa! Let's go. Here you'll see once again, like how am I going for my passes? Always pass high because even if you can't Ooh, score it, close. the opponents have a harder time saving it. Even though I have no boofs, I'm always trying to pass the ball high. Oh, that's fine. Here we kind of just oh, no. both get balled. Can't blame no. Stripe for that one. Soft touch into hard touch. Clinical. Kind of an air dribble, but really that was more just a soft touch into a hard touch. And then Stripe and I get paired against my favorite new player. Everybody at him. Go at him on Twitter for me. Get him to play some games with me rather than against me. We play, I think, <laughs> second round against Face Scissors. Or I'm playing with Coconut. Yeah. Second round against Face Scissors. Or no, third. And I think he goes down. <laughs> That's not the last time we played Face Scissors this video. <laughs> uh, I might be the reason Face Scissors quit. Here, this is where mechanics come in. Here, why why is it okay for me to challenge early? Oh, because I know my teammate is behind me, that's, that's um, and I actually don't want to clog rotations or stall him. Uh, Here, what's really important is boosting through oh, the shot the whole time, really jumping off the wall. Ball. There, nice we're just shot. balling him. Just balling. Yep. That's all right. Panic, and we lose that game. I'm gonna take the blame for that. Just trust your teammate. You gotta trust your teammate. I'm sorry, Coconut. That was totally my fault. But here, this guy will clean it up. Just taking good 50s. Leads to good things. Unfortunately, we get demoed. We're going to get scored on there. My teammate bumps me as I'm rotating back and then goes for back corner. Once again, it happens. Just don't tilt. Like some games, like you'll queue. If you're solo queuing, the problem is you sacrifice, you know, a certain percentage of your games if you can't control your teammate and you don't know your teammate is at your level. This is what happens when you go for committal centers, right? Commit for the center. Luckily, my teammate finishes at that time. But here I go for a committal center. We probably should have won this game, but he choked it. And then <laughs> we lose. He says, OMG, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's okay, I don't flame people. We'll just, we'll just take it to the grave. <laughs> Feels bad. Once again, even in game 62, scoring open nets, playing back. Gonna lead to a lot of our goals. But I remember, yeah, at, at this point, we were kind of just trading up and down. Game 62, we lose. Game 63, we win. Able to follow up a ball there. You want to make sure you can follow up the pass from your teammate. High, I, I'd say definitely fast aerials are important. My teammate hits it over my head and just totally sabotages us. <laughs> and then I'm rotating back and I'm helpless again. And you can clip on him sometimes. 
but yeah. So wall play is definitely big. Here, once again, putting the ball high. See if I can score that. Let's go. So game 67, we're still basically around the same rank. Um, and not having comms was definitely hurting me. Um, something I end up doing that helped a lot is when I did find a good teammate, even though I didn't have comms, comms aren't as important at the super, super high levels. Just having a, just knowing my teammate is solid. Sometimes I would solo, solo queue into party queue by like using that team up feature at the end. That was, that was kind of helpful. Team up feature came with clutch. I think we lost narration on some of this footage in here. Yeah, we lost narration on the footage <clears throat> for the next few minutes because once again, I messed up my recording software. But when I did get these 1v1 situations, I was always very confident. And just being able to convert your 1v1 situations, you can probably get to like grand champ, I would say, without having great 1v1 play. But um, past that, you need to be able to convert 1v1s. You need to be able to convert 1v1s. You could get really, really high up in rank just by playing on some of the principles I already talked about. But yeah, waiting back on centers, just playing very, very far back. <laughs> Somehow that turns into a goal. <laughs> Imagine. Sometimes, sometimes things go well too. Center the ball to the teammate, get a good recovery. Teammates can follow it up. Um, somehow that turns into a goal for us. <laughs> I remember me and Krios were on a tear. We just could not lose. And then we win in OT. Here, once again, what am I going for? When they're already on their back line, flip reset isn't going to do anything. Double tap isn't going to do anything. Double taps are great like when people can't play backward defense, but like these guys can play backward defense. So I'm just going for an air dribble because I can control the 50 midair better than they can, usually, if I play it right. Game 77. Once again, just putting the ball high, putting in awkward situations. Sometimes it just straight up leads to a goal, so that'll work. Once again, challenging early. Why can I challenge early? Because I know my buddy's behind me. So that's what gives me the confidence there. And we win game 77. Game 78, just shooting through the ball. We're already down 2-0 in this game, though. Luckily, I get a nice stop there. That's 1v1 defense. That's shadowing. Watch the 100 games of 1v1 if you want to break down on how I kind of move around on defense now. We're definitely on the on the steady increase. We're 1690 something, almost 1700. Thought that one was a fluke. Unfortunately, it was not. It's not a fluke. So we end up going down. We went out of tear, um, but that's where the the team up feature came in clutch. Game 80, right? We're in the final stretch. Can we get GC3? It's 1715 MMR, okay? For GC3. So so close. Here I end up totally scuffing my hit. And here's where the mechanical in inconsistency comes in. I remember not warming up for a couple of these games, feeling cocky, but really, I, you know, I gotta. You you can't be throwing goals like this for no reason. Just follow, check out the new warm-up routine video if you haven't. Definitely got to. Check out "Stop Doing This Before Ranked." I think that's the video title. Because I, I remember I was just throwing too many goals for no reason. Bo Justice was not happy. We try queuing with Coconut again. Yeah, I'm gonna air dribble it. Coconut's gonna peek. I'll make a high center. Unfortunately. Oh, yo, that was a great pass too. Look who comes around. Look who we're playing. It's Verge. I have a good track record against Verge. We played him in. He's got. I played him with King Ranny, and he took him down. Now let's see if we can take him down with Coconut. Yeah, this is why Verge never wants to collab with me. Shit, this dude. is why Verge doesn't want to collab with me. I can't, I can't believe I didn't say that. I almost saved it. Luckily, get a nice damn. dribble up the field, and we're going to end up taking down Verge. Oh, How about that? But his, his teammate definitely sabotaged him. That was not a fair matchup. I think Verge is definitely a, yeah, probably a better. Eh, I don't know. After the series, maybe not a better player than me. But I thought, I thought he definitely was during. Here, you'll see me just getting cocky. Like, j just don't leave your teammate in 2v1s. It's just don't do it. It's not... It's your fault. If your teammate gets scored on in the 2v1, it is 100% your fault. Whoever leaves their teammate in the 2v1, it is their fault if they get scored on. Your goal should be to create 2v1 situations, not leave your teammate in them. I remember I was so angry about this. I air dribbled the ball to the center, and I'm going for a 50-50 on their guy, and he like tries to like pinch it, hits the ball away onto their backboard, and they score with zero seconds. <laughs> and then I get that save. Breakaway goals are so like game changing too in 2v2. That's something I realized. If you can have patience on your side, speaking of patience, 
Nice, it's open. Well done. Oh, that guy got dumpstered. <laughs> Feels good. Right. Oh. So I team back up with Stripe. We're in game Just 88. That That's fine. Right, nice GG. 50. We're going to win this one. Once again, game oh. 89. Look who it is. Oh, it's me and Stripe this time against 50? my buddy Scissors. Oh, I bumped him. Oh, what a play. You're beasting. Just carry me. <laughs> I can't, I can't help you. Ooh. You're so good. You're so good. Just keep all the music. <laughs> Just all chase. All you. Yeah, that should work. Uh, yeah. Yeah, let's I kinda, go. I kind of got clipped. I felt like a... Keep You're just playing things. back once again on offense. Yeah. Creating you. space. <laughs> Not trying to force anything. Trying to get back to my roots. Here you'll see some clearance demos come in clutch. Just trying to get into the 2v1 situation. Just get, just win the 2v1 situation, then figure out the rest nice. after that. He committed to, he Waiting center very patiently, off. ends up creating a goal. We get a 2v1 there, so I'm going to start hunting demos. I know my teammate's behind me, so I'm going to early challenge. We get a goal. I'm just 50-50-50-50. Just soft touch into hard touch, 50-50-50. Let me just create goals. Once again, like if I see people challenging me, like... Why are you challenging me? Like they're, they're like <laughs> fifty. <I'm laughs> you'll see. You'll see how well this works. Just like <laughs> maybe I need to do a road to SSL with no mechanics. Comment if you'd want to see that. If you have any ideas for how I can do a road to SSL, it's not just copying somebody else's. Arrow shot. Slot that one. I end up party queuing because I had good success with Krios. We're 1694 with five games left. GC3 is 1715. All right. I don't know what happened there, but looks like we're off to a off to a big lead here. All right, we win this game. Game 96, we go up. Game 97, I just have to make sure I don't mess up my shot. And here, I remember, I didn't know if I had a flip, but uh, pro tip: if you hold jump off the wall, you uh will save your flip longer. If you hold jump and then flip, you'll save it a little longer. You can get a few seconds, a few milliseconds. That allows me to flip into that ball. One game off. One game off, entering game 100. This is the rank up game to GC3. Hit the ball high, ends up working for my teammate. Once again, just playing passive, not playing lateral, playing behind my teammate whenever he has it. Just waiting in the middle. We win it. A hundred games of 2v2. We're GC3 Div 1. Calling it. We're done. Game over. My rank hasn't updated, but we're done. Let's go. Video's over. Thanks for watching. All right. There you have it. 100 games of 2v2. The results went up about 100 MMR from GC2 Div 1 to GC3 Div 1. Biggest takeaways in terms of mechanics, practice aerial shots, dribbling, I'd say recoveries and fast aerials. The fundamentals are gonna be the most important. If you wanna practice a flashy mechanic, you can go for air dribbles, but honestly, wouldn't work on much past that. For game sense, being risk averse, patient, non-committal, staying behind your teammates, um, and really never leaving your teammate back in a 1v2, not trying to outplay opponents, instead trying to control the ball and maintain possession. And what should you do next? Like and subscribe or DM me on Discord, link in the description below for coaching. <laughs> As always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace, guys.